Hello, this video is going to take us through the important step of putting the electronic items into an item that you've already made. So it's always a little easier if you're making the item yourself, like I've done with this handbag. So we can really plan our connections for the electronics. I'm going to take you through one part of this tutorial. So the part where I'm putting embedding in the screen, this lovely screen here, will take you through soldering, mounting it in your project and some sewing tips about placement. So we did remove one of the connectors it came with and here is the tutorial. So here is the little star of the show. We prepared him earlier. There's a tutorial for soldering these. Um, so we cut off that thick bulky connector so that it can fit flat. So when you're working with wearables, it can be a good idea just to solder in your own connectors. And here's the piece that we sewed for it and it's inside it out. And what we'll do is we'll be placing this here against the fabric. So we're going to secure it in place. The screen did come with these little screws and we po poked holes in it earlier. So now we'll be able to just push it through, put the backing on and then feed our wires through. This is just placing the screen where it would be. So we're creating a little flap here. We've got our magnet that's on the handbag. So we'll open this, but that means this area here where our wires. So again, super flexible silicone wire, and we'll just measure out where that would come out. So it's gonna be through the handbag and up to the top where we'll have our circuit board. So when we measure that, I always just make sure to give a little bit more than what you would need and then cut it there. So then we can solder on these wires here. So I know I'll need about that much in length. Place your component where it will be, poke the holes through so you know where you'll be sewing. And basically you're testing out the placement of your component. I've also put thick interfacing on the back of it just to give it some stability and support. I'm going to be soldering the wires to these little holes for the screen. So initially it did come with this attached, so you could just plug in your wires to it. But because this is going into a wearable, it's going into a handbag, and I want it to basically be flat against the fabric, that was sort of adding bulk to it. So I've cut that off, and then what we're gonna do is attach the wires to these holes and then that will be flexible so when we open this pocket these will be with flexible wires so what we need to do is I'm just going to use my tool here the helping hands and we're just going to attach it in there so then we're gonna look at these pinholes I need a wire for each which I've cut already from these lovely silicone wires Again, when we're doing wearables, try and use silicone wires. They really are fantastic. So, so flexible. I usually do style um, the wires to match the bag. So I'm making quite a pale bag. I will be using white wires for this. Normally, I would always recommend try and use different wires, red for power, black, black for ground, and so on. It makes it much easier to identify when you're wiring stuff up. I will use one black wire for ground just to make sure I've got my orientation correct for the pins on here. So let's jump into it. First thing is we have prepped our work area. I have solder that I can use. I've got me my tools here for cleaning and tinning my solder iron um, and the helping hands. And I've also got wire strippers, cutters, and so on. So always try and make sure you have your tools at your disposal and get them ready for when you're about to solder. So the wires have been pre-cut. Both ends at the moment aren't showing any wires exposed. So what we're gonna do is with one side of the wire, we're gonna get our stripper and we're just going to place the wire in between these grooves here and then all you do is press down and give that a pull. And see, nicely, we've got our wire cut. Fantastic. You don't need to cut too much. I might do a little bit more um, because we can always trim the wire once we've soldered it. 
I usually do give it a, a little twist as well when I'm done. So we've got one done there. Let's continue and just strip the rest of the wire. And again, give it a little twist. So we'll do that for all the wires. Okay. So the other thing to mention is when we open the bag, this will be facing us. So we don't want the exposed ends of the wire visible. So what I'm going to be doing is feeding them through from this front direction. And when they're fed through, let's just make sure that's super twisted. And then when you feed it through, um, you can then see from the back that the um, sort of plug ends will be on that side. Okay, in fact, I'm just going to check. So this is going to be for ground. So yeah, that is the second one in. Perfect. And then you can see that you'll just have sort of nice wires visible and not our soldering. Not that our soldering is not going to be nice, but you know what I'm saying. Okay, so with that held in place, I do usually like to use a bit of flux because um, I use a lead-free solder, which I would always recommend. I have a thinner one here and then this sort of medium one here. So lead-free is definitely a healthier choice. I would highly recommend it. And because of it though, I do use a bit of this on there and it just helps it flow nice and easily. So I'm going to be holding it actually on that metallic part of the pin as well as against the wire. And when it starts heating up, that's when usually you can give it a tap and that will just flow nicely. So you really want it to get that flow to go all the way through. There we go. There's our first one done. So now we just need to do the same for all of the other holes, but not the meso. Hi, I'm Christine. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more wearable technology tutorials. And when you've done a few, normally I then start threading them all through and that way it just makes the soldering go a little bit quicker. Not that we're in a rush, um, but sometimes we are in a rush. So we'll just pop this one through. So now you can see that I've fed through all the wires. And now all we'll need to do is go through each one. Okay, so that flows beautifully. We can see it all flowing down there. And then all we need to do is with your snips. And again, try to make sure you have your eyes covered. So have protective goggles, um, or at least normally I shield them when I snip these because they do tend to kind of go absolutely flying, as you can see. Okay, so we're just snipping these to make sure we have nice tidy connections. We don't want to have any shorts, which can happen if any of these um, kind of touch, like they're touching here, for example, that would create a short. So we definitely do not want any shorts in our circuits. And then what will happen is because we've got these nice soft silicone wires, it is great for our wearable. It's going to be super flexible. It's going to create a really nice system. So we can see we've just tidied these up a little. We've got that nice shine on it. I will admit that fourth one there is a little wonky, but it's doing its job. The solder is being held there, so that's perfect. And then from the front view, we just have our wires. That one there looks a little too tall. The perfectionist in me is a bit annoyed by the cutting there. Um, but also you can slightly push up the silicone covering just to cover those nicely. This but will look great once it's sewn into our system and we can just see how it will look. So it will be sewn in there. There'll be a small opening at the bottom here where our wires can pass through and that means our circuit has some flexibility in it 
um, and these wires won't get damaged. Okay, so that is soldering. Again, this screen, like I said, it did have the connector there, which was quite large. Um, and that would just would be pushing against our wearable, our fabric. So we've cut that off and then we've soldered it onto these extra pins they've provided. And then it will create a much nicer um, circuit for the wearable. So I've just applied our fabric glue just to the outer edges. We don't really want to go onto any of our circuitry. We just want to keep it to these edges and then that will be enough for us to be able to just push it down. It's just to give us a little bit of extra adhesive. You don't have to do this. Um, sometimes I also maybe use a glue gun so you get that hot glue on there. Either is fine. And then what we're going to do is just put it in place. So exactly where you would like your component to be. And we can use our little sewing clips, one on either side, just to hold the component in place. So now it's got the glue backing, it's held in place where we would like it. Let me just maybe adjust it, there we go. Okay, and then you can leave this to dry before you sew or you can begin sewing and that will help with the adhesion process because it's pressing it down. It's absolutely up to you. I do try and do very minimal stitches to sort of hide them and um, I will definitely start with the top two, I think, because that's that secure area that needs to be in place and then we'll see about the bottom two. So this piece here is two fabric layers thick. So I'm not actually going through to the other side. I'm just sort of folding it and making sure that I go through just the single layer for it. So it depends on yourself and your circuit. Um, you may want to go through both layers. I didn't want to for this particular look. So I'm just kind of holding it at a bit of an angle, making sure to scoop through and then protecting it so it doesn't go through the other side. Okay, and then once you've sewn through and you're happy with that job, tie a knot with the first two threads that you had. And then normally I then kind of just run it through the fabric in and out once. Um, so this will be sort of just behind the board a little bit. And that is going to be where I can leave the two threads hanging. So we'll pull it through, but then kind of leave it through there. And I will cut those off. And then I do apply a small amount of that glue again to it. So in fact, I'll apply that glue just before I cut it. So again, it's just a fabric glue. It can be fray check or just a high tack fabric glue. And this will dry clear. You won't see it in the um, fabric or anything at all. It'll just go clear. And it's just a way to make sure that that is gonna be super secure on that edge. And then when you're happy with it, I normally leave it to dry a little bit and then you can just cut those threads. So do that for each of the corners and then it will not see be seen on the other side. So here we have, this has been sewn now. I did sew all four corners in the end. I thought, why not? This is gonna be a bag that I am gonna be using on a daily basis. So those have been sewn and we'll keep the clips on for now while the glue dries. These have had glue on them as well, just that fabric glue or um, fray check, something similar, and then this will dry clear so you won't see it anyways, but it just gives some uh, strength to this staying on. And as I say, because it was two layers, you can see that we don't see any sewing on the outside. Okay, so there we go. What we'll do once that's dried, we'll fold this up and then we'll get on with the rest of our bag. One thing just to add is that sometimes with these finished wire ends here, um, so I have trimmed it up a little bit, but you can put a line of 
a hot glue gun, for example, to kind of hold them in place. Or I also have um, like this system where you just use a bit of resin with UV light and that will cover that up nicely as well. So that's something you can do just to add a little bit more durability to this finished circuit.